I don't know what everyone is talking about. Hunting with a spear and my best friend by my side is a very historical and ancient approach to... Oh look, the white man! I dare ya! See, you still have range, but definitely need talents, gear, corruptions, rotation, and a whole lot more. No, seriously, survival needs a lot more because it ain't no Beastmaster, you feel me? Still way more fun though. <laughs> Before we start, a heads up though, there are multiple ways to build your survival, especially for dungeons. I will keep it simple for you, but remember, raidbots.com is your friend. That draws dicks on your face when you're drunk, eh? On the first row, you have two options. Viper's Venom is a Serpent Sting buffer giving you extra damage and making it free. This works especially well when the lane poison trait, which we will go over in a bit, but a very important point to remember. Alpha Predator, on the other hand, gives you an extra charge of kill command and 30% extra damage on the ability. This works best with the Dire Consequences Azerite trait that spawns beasts when you kill command. Both options are good, and either one can be stronger than the other, and if you don't have the specific Azerite trait to decide which to get, sim! Told you ass, raidbots.com. Next up, the default option and universal pick in raids is Guerrilla Tactics. This is the highest single target damage on the row and actually the best AoE option as well. Kinda. It gives you a second charge of grenades and increases the initial damage by 100%. The only time you will switch from this is when you are, again, running multiple latent poison traits and you're in a dungeon. Also, with the Viper's Venom pick earlier. Then you get Hydra's Bite. This will make it easier for you to dot everything up if your build is Serpent Sting heavy. This will also severely impact your grenade playstyle, but more on this later. Next up, you have the survivability row. Essentially, all options are viable. It comes down to you what you need or what you want to do. Standard though is natural mending. This will reduce the cooldown of acceleration whenever you spend focus, giving you more sustain over the course of a fight. This is good since you have no sustain. Niet. Nada. Kinda. Zero. Nimik. You get the picture. Camouflage is a very situational ability that can prove useful in Mythic Dungeons. There are mechanics and skips you can do by being invisible, such as the Freehold Event Enable. This is very situational, of course, and only viable if your group asks of this to be done. Row number 4, Bloodseeker. The end. What? There's really no other option here. This will give you the most amount of damage. It's a passive and you hardly have to manage it anyway. Don't worry, you have a buttload of other things to manage though. Next up, mobility, utility, cecility, oh, you know, things that don't do damage on the meters. Pulse haste is a raid default in almost all situations. After you disengage, you get a small burst of speed. This is good to use in boss transitions, getting from A to B, etc, etc. Biting shot might become your best friend in 8.3 though. It's good for all the usuals. Locking adds down to let your tank kite, make it your party survive, blah blah blah. But what you really want it for is for that damn thing from beyond. God damn it, it's chasing me everywhere! Row number 6 is probably the most difficult row to make your pick. And you want to always make the best choice for you. Take Mongoose Bite. That's it. Last row, you have two options again. The default raid and single target choice will be Birds of Prey. This, paired up with the essences and high haste gear, will give you very long coordinated assaults windows giving you ridiculous amount of single target damage. It also pairs really well with Blur of Talents, but more on Azerite later. Wildfire Infusion is your grenade slash AoE slash dungeon build option. This will transform your regular grenades into special colorful grenades to spread joy and poison and bleeds and death to a lot of things. Each grenade type actually has a specific effect that you need to play around for maximum value. Blue Bomb makes Mongoose Bot apply bleed that stacks 3 times. Red Bomb resets the cooldown of kill command and the Green Bomb does extra damage against targets with Serpent Sting on them and refreshes the dot. Pretty neat, huh? The way BFA is designed is so you really know what is the best unequivocally item between two seemingly equal choices. 
Ideally, we would recommend you sim on websites such as Raidboss.com, but we understand this can get tedious. Although simming can give you that very, very specific answer, you will still mostly want to have haste above all else with versatility and crit close to each other. Mastery is dog shit. Not even that, you can slip in dog shit and deal more damage to yourself than the mastery can provide. And this is because Blizzard hates survival hunters. But in all fairness, we mentioned your coordinated assault window relies heavily on haste and it's true. And honestly, haste just makes it possible to do all these shenanigans survivals can and should do. With that in mind, the consumables should be fairly obvious. Fairly. You want a cord of haste and quick sand spindles for your rings and sockets. You can opt for a Leviathan's Eye of Agility at lower item levels if you're starting out, but Agility will lose against Haste very very quickly. And for your weapon, get that quick navigation because Haste will solve your problems. It won't help you switch to Beastmaster, but will make you think you don't need to. <laughs> you might need to- Alright, moving on! Greater Flask of the Currents will be an obvious choice unless you want the Stamina Flask. Don't get the Stamina Flask, please. The Potion of Umbrill Fury will be your single target potion of choice and you can swap to Potion of Empower Proximity when fighting 4 or more targets. If for some reason you can't stay in melee when fighting them, go with Superior Battle Potion of Agility. As for food, Baked Portato is the best. Mm, especially when you mash it into that sweet sweet puree. It's the best food in the world and always makes my spear deal the most. There are a few ways to build survival and we started touching on the traits back in the talents. But now, let's really touch on them. For raids, when you want single target damage, get Blower of Talents and stack it three types. This is essential with the Birds of Prey talent and you never want one without the other. Everything after this is complementary and if you really want to, you can take this build in dungeons as well. Maybe on tyrannical weeks where bosses need to die. Heart of Darkness is a good filler trait, adds a lot of stats and it's obviously obtainable from raids. Primeval Intuition is a really good option to have one off, increasing your maximum focus and adding a lot of crit into your rotation. One Dire Consequence is a good addition and works well with the Alpha Predator talent. Wilderness Survival can be good to have one if your gear is running with high amounts of haste and you are playing the Memory of Lucid Dreams Major. In Dungeons, there are two builds to aim for and each will dictate your talents as well. In lower keys and keys with very big pulls, Take Wildfire Cluster and stack it as much as you can. This paired with Guerrilla Tactics and Wildfire Infusion talents will make your bomb build centric to your playstyle. It's very good and not easily punishable since you are relying on hitting almost whatever, almost whenever and you don't care if shit dies fast. Alternatively, laying poison stacked 3 times work better in smaller density dungeons like King's Rest and even better in high keys. Latent Poison gains maximum value when you can let the poison stack and also be able to pop it with Mongoose Bite. This does not happen if mobs die too fast or the pools are too big and you don't have time to dot everything up. Latent works well with Hydra's Bite and the talent we mentioned, but that means you won't have two charges of grenades, meaning you won't have efficient cooldown reduction with Carve, meaning you'll have fewer bombs from decreasing the value of Wildfire Cluster. As such, you never want to pair these two as the right traits together. Wilderness Survival once is actually pretty good in dungeons, way more than in single target scenarios and works especially well with the grenade build. You can add to these generic stat traits that will boost your haste and crit. Traits like Clockwork Heart are often seen now with Mechagon added to the pool and will cause almost no downsides to your build since they add universal damage by the sheer fact of them being stats and not ability boosters. Other than this, try to aim for overwhelming power as a miner with resounding protection being the best defensive out there. Survival is possibly the most versatile spec in the game right now, with the most viable options in terms of Azerite traits and talent synergies. It's very difficult to paint a proper picture without showcasing at least twice as many builds here. We recommend simming, testing and most of all, check in with the True Shot Lodge Discord community where the top hunters gather. Essences. For maximum single target output, you want your major to be Memory of Lucid Dreams. This together with Birds of Prey and a bunch of haste will extend your coordinated assault giving you prolonged burst phases. An alternative to this is Condensed Life Force. This behaves a bit differently and will devalue stuff like Wilderness Survival that relies on very high uptimes of coordinated assaults. It is easier to use, mostly a pop and forget with a lot of built-in damage. 
As miners, Focusing Iris is the best single target haste generator, but will drop its stacks once you switch targets, which is unlikely once you stick to the boss in your DPS window. Breath of the Dying is one of the strongest raw damage providers, while Conflict and Strife is a straightforward versatility buff with a high uptime. If you did up opting for Condensed Life Major, add up Memory of Lucid Dreams Miner. In dungeons and in building your AoE prowess, take either Focusing Iris Beam or Blood of the Enemy for Majors. Iris is a simple 1.5 minute channel burst, while Blood of the Enemy debuffs all your enemies around increasing the crit chance against them. In dungeons, you usually want to be as efficient for large trash pools, so big burst windows will favor that. As for the miners, Conflictless Strife is always a solid choice, even more so here for the damage reduction. Also, purification protocols will perform better as well. Breath of the Dying is always a solid choice, and you can even go for Memory of Lucid Dreams for a more smooth gameplay with some focus refunds. Also, the versatility it provides is nice. Now for trinkets. The raid tier has very strong trinkets, and even if you don't usually raid, it's worth enough to just get these two trinkets. I'm talking of course about the Humming Black Dragon Scale and the Vita Charge Titan Shard. These are currently the best haste options in the game and easily targetable. Outside of these, Torment in a Jar drops from Zanesh and has a built-in AoE damage effect that works well in AoE scenarios, usually Mythic Plus. Another more overlooked haste source is the pocket-sized computational device with the recalibration rate punch card. These are not the only trinkets you can get, but some of the strongest and may be easier to get since everyone wants them and getting a group to farm for them shouldn't take no time at all. For the weapons, the raid drops two of them that are corrupted but both mediocre in effects. And Zigva drops from Maud and brings the Devour Vitality effect. This does okay single target damage and has a lifesteal component, while the Quormulet comes with the Echoing Void 2, which has seen too many nerfs to be good. It does, however, have very good secondary stats, so maybe a prime candidate to be cleansed. As far as actual corruption effects go, we all know that infinite stars and toilets and appendages, these are damage procs, they scale with gear in one way or another, but usually are very expensive to use. Expedient and stat corruptions like Void Ritual and Racing Pulse will be something to actually aim for and stack. The haste is really good and can help extend your coordinated assault windows a lot. Once you can reach a 2 minute uptime on your assault, however, racing pools won't be as valuable anymore. Gushing Wound is one of the best examples of pure DPS for very little corruption cost. It has one rank, however, but you can easily stack this with itself or other cheap stat corruptions. The standard opener sees you pre potting and applying Serpent Sting. Follow it up with a Wildfire Bomb. Pop your coordinated salt, cast one Mongoose Bite, use Kill Command. From here, you proceed to your normal rotation based on what talents you selected. Your number one priority is to cast Mongoose Bite as often as you can to extend your assault window. Use your coordinated assault on cooldown as long as it doesn't overlap with your previous one. Kill Command on cooldown without capping on focus cast Wildfire Bomb, but never both charge back to back. Cast Serpent Sting to consume your Viper's Venom, refresh or apply its Poison debuff. Mongus Bite last to prevent capping on focus. A few mentions here. First, I clearly cap on focus and other things. The purpose of this section is to give you a visual aid as to what ability is more important than its counterparts. Second, you never want to cast Serpent Sting during coordinated assault windows or when Mongus Bite has 5 stacks already. When in AoE, your most important thing to do is cast Carve to reduce the cooldown of Wildfire Bomb. Keep in mind that it can shave off up to 5 seconds of its cooldown and you never want to waste any of those seconds. Obviously, cast Wildfire Bomb on cooldown without double casting it like mentioned earlier and respecting the Wildfire Infusion effect. Cast Mongoose Bite on targets with 10 stacks of lane poisons if you are running the trade and use Kill Command on cooldown. Don't focus cap, of course, and remember, Carve takes more focus to cast and you will cast it more on AoE, so kill command is pretty crucial. Apply Serpent Sting to as many targets as you can, with keeping in mind what we discussed earlier in the video. Other than this, you can stick to the single target rotation for most of the time. 
survival is one of the funnest specs for us to research since it has so many things going for it and it's a shame it's not performing as well as the other hunter specs. A big shout out to Thymine for helping us with the guide. Currently ranked number one survival and overall DPS in the world for Nihilota. Also, make sure to check out the True Shot Lodge Discord community, link down below. It's more information, more advanced information for survival and you might find as the Rotians work, which helped us compile the rotation section of the guide. Cheers! A big salute and shout out to all of our Patreons for keeping their support on a monthly basis for all of the content that we do, you know, the guides, the streams, the one cool down weekly wob news show it means the world to us to keep on continuing producing this content and without the support from you lovely people it wouldn't be as possible as it is right now so thank you once again and hey if you ever wondered how is this patreon thing going just check the link in the description you should find everything you need over there that being said thank you very much for watching and i'll catch you next time